Hi plant friends, it's Tatiana, your favorite plant mama. Is it too much to say I'm their favorite plant mama? So today I'm going to do some more DIY self-watering systems for you all as well as repotting a couple of my plants. I know that I have talked your ears off about self-watering systems. I did a whole video where I went through the most common self-watering systems, tried them out, and gave my review on what actually happened when I tried them and left my plants for a long period of time. So definitely watch that video if you haven't already. I'll drop it here and link it in the description below. You will learn so much and you will feel confident trying your own DIY self-watering systems. After all of those experiments, I figured out which was my my favorite which was the string water wicking reservoir system so I'm going to create some DIY versions of that on a couple of different pots so I don't have to worry about sticking the string in the pot and doing all of that when I'm about to leave my plants again this time I'll have a couple of pots ready to go with more string I hope the tutorial is super helpful and you enjoy the repot don't forget to subscribe to my channel I really really appreciate it and let's just get started so what you'll need is your pot of course preferably with holes at the bottom and drainage holes any type of rope or cord or string I'm using macrame cord here tape and scissors I have pots here that I can pop out the bottom like so and I'm going to take some string and loop it through the pot at the bottom like so. So I want to create enough give here where you can imagine that this rope will be hanging into a reservoir below it. So I want to give it enough leeway there and I want to look into the pot now and have it go about halfway up to the top of the pot. You can see that there. So I'm just going to cut it. I feel like this is a pretty good length. And then about halfway through the pot here, I'm going to cut the string. I got this macrame board originally to make planting hangers, but it's become really useful for my little DIY self-watering systems as well. It was pretty cheap for what I got. I think this is about 10 bucks for all of this core, and I've used it for a ton of things, so it's been really useful. I have the string pretty much to the top of the pot, and I'm just going to tape that to the inside of the pot to secure it. I have it taped on the inside, and I have a good amount of give on the bottom here. And I'm just going to repeat that with one of the other holes. With a bigger plant like this, I want to use longer pieces of string to go through because I'm assuming that I'll be putting it on top of a bigger pool of water than let's say a smaller plant. So this is what you should have. It's taped here on the inside of the pot and there are pieces of string hanging out the bottom. I am done with both pots. Super easy. You can do it with things that you already have around your house. The string is sort of ugly, but you can just hide it in the little tray like so, and you don't see it at all. I'm starting with a little up potting of my pothos here. It's a golden pothos. You can see that I've got some variegation on some of the leaves, but it's definitely in need of a repot. It's gotten really, really big. I can't even fit it all on the camera, and I think it's just going to really love being in a new pot here. So I'm just going to loosen it from here a bit. I do have some kind of mold growing at the top of the soil, so I'm really not going to reuse it. worst root bound I've seen but starting to get pretty pretty root bound there so I'm actually just going to scrape off that top layer that is a little moldy I usually when I get moldy as you can see there's this coloration if it's on the camera I usually put cinnamon on top of the soil to deter from that fungus and mold growth and it does a pretty good job 
It's not always perfect. I'm just loosening up that top layer because I tend to get a little bit of mold there. But it doesn't bother me enough to completely knock all of this soil off of this plant. And it really will disturb the pothos if I do that. But let's look at the roots. So we've got roots. They look like they're coming along nicely. I'm not noticing any root rot really. Don't look the healthiest at the bottom. But that is because they were probably soaking up that water. Putting in the soil. I haven't mixed anything into the soil because you could call me lazy, but this plant does pretty well in any situation. And we transplant. I could loop some of this back into the pot just so we get more roots going on because I have a ton of aerial roots on this plant. I know this is a slightly larger up pot than you would really normally want to do. You want to go one pot size up, but this is such a fast growing plant. I feel like I've repotted it like three times in the past three months and it just constantly needs a bigger size. It gets root bound really quickly and it doesn't mind being root bound, but I just know it can grow so much and I want it to grow so much. She's looking good though. This is a pothos that I have grown from just a couple of leaves. It's completely propagated. I actually foraged this plant. I saw some pothos growing out in the wild in Florida. They are invasive species there because they grow like crazy. And I took a leaf with a vine, a couple of leaves with vines, and I've been able to grow this plant. Just making sure all of these aerial roots on the side are buried in the soil. And there we have it. That is our repotted pothos. It looks gorgeous, honestly. Looking good, girl. Looking good, girl. The next plant I'm going to be up potting is my calicacia, but I also have an arrowhead vine in here because I thought they looked cute together. I had some difficulty with this plant because I think I have just been putting it in pots that are too small for it. On top of that, it hasn't really liked the terracotta because it prefers to be moist, which is why I'm going to be using one of these plastic pots. I have problems with the leaves constantly dying on this plant and I think there's just not enough space for the roots to grow to sustain these big new leaves it keeps pushing out. So I think it'll really benefit from being in a nice big pot. I'm going to gently... I really don't want to damage this plant because I have a lot of trouble with leaves really easily snapping off of this plant. pot here and you can see how root bound it has gotten even the bottom roots were starting to look like they were rotting a little bit but it's not too compact yet nothing crazy I don't really want to loosen the root ball because it's such a delicate plant I think it's gonna grow like crazy in here which I'm and I also think it will help to keep it in plastic because it'll stay moist longer. And there we go, that was easy. And here we have 
our repotted plants with the strings hanging out the bottom. Here is the pothos. It looks super cute, I think, in this new pot. I can't wait for it to grow really, really big, and I will definitely show you all the new growth. But there is that. And then here is the alocasia, an arrowhead plant, in the new pot. It's super cute, right? I can't wait for it to get really big. These plants can get really, really big leaves. They just need a lot of space for their roots to grow. So I'm excited to show you how big it gets right now bigger than my head. Hopefully soon it'll be bigger than my boyfriend's head, which is a really hard feat. He has a big head. <laughs> you don't have to see them if you don't want to. Just like that. Oh wait, <laughs> I didn't put it all the way in. <laughs> just like that. And now it's not visible and it's something that you can just pull out and use when you need it. Like when you're away from your plants and no one can babysit them for you. Thank you all so much for joining me in a little bit of repotting and some DIY. If you like plants and plant DIYs and things like that, definitely subscribe to my channel. I love having you all here. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye! So cute, right?